Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to fall. Uh, this is one of my favorite seasons. I probably say that about every season at the beginning of the season, but I really mean it this time. I love fall. I love just how the light changes. I love the smell of the crunchy leaves. Um, and I love making crocheted pumpkins, which is what we're going to be doing here today. Um, <clears throat> this whole pumpkin knitted crochet pumpkin thing that's going on, I love it because it's kind of like um, you already take something that's already cozy, right? Like pumpkin always already gives you those cozy fall vibes. And then it's kind of like you put a sweater over it, which just adds to the cozy fall vibes, you know, and it's just, they're so cute, you guys. I'm glad that you're here. I hope you guys are excited to learn how to make these. Um, <clears throat> my name is Brenda K.B. Anderson, and I am excited to show you all the steps you need to learn in order to make these pumpkins. And by the way, they're super easy. Okay, so when I first designed these, I designed them about a year ago for a blog post on the Creative Crochet Corner website. Um, and I was like, this will be like the easiest pattern ever. You just make a rectangle and a square, sew them together, stuff them, put a cinnamon stick in, boom, you're done, right? It's going to be perfect. But then I got a lot of questions about how it's constructed. And I was like, oh, OK, I guess it is a little bit unusual. It's easy to make, but it is a little bit unusually constructed. Um, so I thought this would make a really great live, because I thought well, we really need to have a video of what's going on here, because it's so easy. I don't want anyone to miss out. Um, but it is kind of hard to sh you know, explain it in words. So that's why I love this medium so much when I'm able to teach you guys stuff um, through video. And it just makes everything so much easier, right? Well. I'm super glad that you guys are here. And as you know, this is a live event. So if you have any questions, if there's anything that's unclear, if you want me to go over anything else, um, if you have any comments, if you just want to say hi, Brenda, I love that. Um, put that in the chat box. Um, and I'll try to answer your questions during this live event. So it'd be great to hear from you. I, uh, I see that Renee is already saying howdy, y'all, from Texas. Hi, Renee. Nice to, I'm so, I'm so glad that you joined us. Um, thank you for popping in already. Um, I do want to mention, too, that you're going to want to download this pattern. It is a free download. Um, it's called the Crochet Pumpkin Patch. There is a link in the description, and there's also going to be a li link in the chat as well. <coughs> and another thing I wanted to mention is this particular pattern is part of a larger bundle. It's called the Everything Pumpkin Bundle. Um, and there are other things in there, too, like there's a wooden serving tray that's shaped like a pumpkin that's really cute from the woodworkers. Um, guild and there's also a cu really cute little knitted pumpkin that Jen Lucas made. Um, I think she made that for the knitting circle. And then there's other things in there too, uh, really tasty looking pumpkin-y treats. So it's like a big uh, compilation of a bunch of pumpkin things. So if you got to get your fall on, this is like the perfect way to do it. You can download that. That's also in the des description as well. So, all right. So let's get started. So you'll have your pattern download so you can follow along. Um, and then you're also going to need some yarn. And when I designed this, I was like, OK, I'm not going to buy yarn specifically for these little small pumpkins. Like, I'm just going to go raid my stash. And these are all the colors that I had that I thought would look really pretty together. Um, but and, and I also wanted to show, hey, you know, we don't have to only make these pumpkins in the typical bright orange pumpkin color. Um, but of course, you could, and it would be super cute. But you know, I just wanted to show you an example of like, you know, using a different color palette. So you might want to think about like how you're going to use these. If you're going to put them on your Thanksgiving table or if you're going to do something else with them to decorate, you might think about what kind of colors would go with that. Or you could just go to your stash and get inspired by it and see what you find. So um, with that in mind, um, when I designed this, I was thinking, OK, I, I'm not going to have a very specific thickness of yarn. This has got to work for a bunch of different thicknesses because I want people to use what they already have. Um, or, and just be able to be more creative and just, you know, come up with their own color schemes and sizes of the pumpkins. Because the size of the pumpkins, uh, that is only, um, it's created by using a different thickness of yarn. So what you see here, we have this little kind of grayish one. I think I call it the Acru pumpkin in my um, pattern download. And then this one, these are exactly the same pattern, the same amount of stitches and everything. We're just using you know, skinnier yarn and a smaller hook and a little bit thicker yarn and a larger hook just to get the different sizes. And I think it looks really awesome to have sort of a variety um, of pumpkins together. All right, you won't be able to stop at just one. They're just really addictive also. So that, you know, it'll be great to be able to use up some stash and, you know, have a nice variety of things on your table. All right, so you're going to need some yarn. Let's see. 
I think I have some yarn estimates in here. Okay, so you're going to need about 70 to 80 yards of a light worsted weight DK or worsted weight yarn, or about 100, 110 of a chunky or bulky weight yarn. Um, that's just a ballpark number. I mean, it really is going to depend on what, you know, what your gauge is and how tightly you're crocheting and what the yarn, like how much the yarn compacts down. Um, it's just something to get you, uh, just sort of an idea. So when you're digging through your stash, uh, you'll know about what, what's going to work and what's not. So if you find kind of like, you know, this used to have maybe like, uh, at least definitely over a hundred yards, probably closer to 150 or something, 60, um, and it looks a little saggy, so that's going to work. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how I judge it. I just could look for a saggy skein that needs a home and then turn it into a pumpkin. All right, so um, you're going to need whatever thickness I, you know, if you, you're using like a very thin yarn, you're going to need a very tiny hook in order to make a, a firm enough gauge, so just keep that in mind. So you're going to choose a hook that goes with your yarn size, Choose a hook that's a little smaller than you would normally use to crochet something um, so that you get a nice firm gauge. Like, I don't know, it, I know it's kind of hard to tell because you can't reach out and feel through your screen what this looks like, but this is what we're going to be making. But you can see when I move it around a little bit, it's fairly stiff. It's not very floppy, really. Um, so that's kind of what we're going for. It's much more important that you get a stiffer fabric, um, you know, with, with a smallish sort of hook compared to your yarn than it is to, to even match my gauge. You don't even have to look at my gauge, actually. You don't even have to care about that. You're just going to start working on this pumpkin and then feel the fabric and see if you like how it feels. But I did put gauge information in there in case anybody is thinking like, well, how do I know if this is floppy enough, Brenda? I, I don't know. So I put my gauge for all these different pumpkins in there so you could compare if you're just, you know, having any questions about that. Alrighty. So um, we're getting a hello from Quebec from Monique. Hello, Monique. I'm glad that you're here. And Laura Willits is uh, saying hi, everyone. Hi, Laura. Thanks for popping in. All right, so I am using an eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter, and this is a chunky weight yarn. This is a number five yarn. Um, so it's a little thicker than the sort of typical yarn that in, in the United States, at least, the most prevalent yarn in the big box stores that lots of people use for afghans and things like that, that, that sort of weight, it's a little thicker than that. Um, not that you couldn't use this for afghans, of course. I'm just trying to give you like an idea about how thick this yarn is. All right, so we're gonna start out by chaining 25. So I'm gonna make my slip knot. So if you're brand new to crochet, I forgot to mention this. This is a perfect like second project for a beginner, but if you're an adventurous beginner and you've like never crocheted ever before and you just really wanna make this pumpkin, don't let that stop you. You should just go for it. This is a very simple project. We're making basically a rectangle and then a little square and sewing them together. Um, so, you know, if you're like, hmm, I don't know if I can do that, you can do it, just uh, give it a go. All right, so we're gonna make a slip knot. So we just draw a little loop like that. Then we grab that loop and we're gonna flip it over onto the strand of yarn connected to the ball. And we're gonna place our hook under that and we're going to tighten that up a little. You don't want it super tight. It needs to be able to slip on your hook, um, but it should be fairly snug. Now we're gonna chain 25. So we yarn over and pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. All right, so now we have this chain, which looks like a bunch of little Vs kind of heading in this direction, kind of all stacked up. And then if you roll that over and look at the bottom of your chain, you'll see all these little horizontal dashes. Okay, so that's where I usually like to work when I'm working my first row. I almost always do that. There are some exceptions, but it's easier for me, and I really like the neat and tidy edge that it creates on the side, just in general. Um, but you can crochet into it however you like. If you're like, Brenda, oh, no, that's not for me. I'm just gonna crochet into the top two loops or this back loop here. However you wanna do it is completely fine. All right, so. We're gonna skip this first horizontal dash, which is really close to the hook. Okay, right here where my thumb is, we're skipping that, and then we're gonna go underneath this second dash. Okay, so we're gonna insert our hook underneath that loop, 
and we're gonna, whoops, actually before we do that, we're gonna yarn over, because this, this is called a yarn over slip stitch. The stitch is called that. So we're gonna yarn over, and then we're gonna insert our hook underneath that second back bump. Then we're gonna yarn over again, and we're gonna pull that through. And then we are going to continue pulling that loop through these two loops that are on our hook, like this. And that creates our first stitch. And if you are new to the stitch pattern or new to crochet, <clears throat> I would definitely recommend adding a little stitch marker into that first stitch there, like that, um, just to keep track of it, because it can be a little bit tricky when you're going back and forth and turn rows. That is one of the most common problems when people are learning how to crochet. They either skip that or add too many stitches there. Um, or stitch here and then a stitch here that isn't even a stitch over there. So if you mark that stitch that you just made, you won't be confused when you come back. All righty. We have a hi from New Mexico from Mary. Hi, Mary. And Teresa from Jupiter, Florida. And she is giving me a nice compliment. Thank you so much, Teresa. That was very sweet. And Sharon is saying hi from Tampa Bay, Florida. Hi, Sharon. Okay. So we are going to continue working this yarn over slip stitch all the way across, working into each one of these little back bumps. Actually, only for the first six, sorry. I, I don't mean to confuse it. We're going to work six of these, including the one we just made. All right, so we're going to do five more. So we're going to yarn over, and we're going to insert underneath the next back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, and we're going to continue pulling that loop through the two loops on the hook, just like that, okay? So we're going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, and pull that through those two loops on the hook. So this is similar to a half double crochet, if you're a little bit more experienced with crochet and you've already done that, except there's one less yarn over, okay? So just go slow and make sure you're not accidentally doing a, a half double crochet because sometimes your body gets trained to do a certain stitch and you don't even realize, <laughs> but you're, you're just doing that stitch even though you meant to do something else. That happens to me. All right, so we've got three stitches so far. We're gonna yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then we're gonna pull through these two. And before I do that, I do wanna mention, I think where people sometimes have a little bit of a hard time with this particular stitch is it's hard for them to, let's see, if you yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, and then, and then it's hard to get your hook through that loop right there because it's, you, you're not doing another yarn over to bring it up any higher. Sometimes it gets a little stuck. If you are someone who's having trouble bringing that loop through these two, pinch right at the base of that last loop right here. See, I'm pinching with my thumb and my finger, and then you're gonna grab that with your hook, turn your hook slightly, upside down so that the hook part's going down, and then you can pull through those two. It really helps to pinch it at the base in order to get it through there. So I'll do that again. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, and then I jump up here with my finger and my thumb and pinch it, and then pull through those two. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do one more. like that, and we've got six. And now we're gonna switch to half double crochets, which I had mentioned is very, very similar to this. Um, oh, wow, we've got somebody who's saying hello from Turkey. Let's see, I hope I don't butcher your name, and I'm gonna try to say it as Ezki. Um, thank you so much for joining us, that's awesome. And Joan Whitehouse is viewing also from Quebec. Awesome, or Quebec, I should say, right? Um, and Tasha is saying hello from Norwalk, Connecticut. Hello, everybody. Okay, thanks for popping in. I appreciate that. All right, so we're going to do some half double crochets now. And we're going to do 12 half double crochets. So there goes, there's just going to be six stitches left over. Okay, so we're going to stitch all the way across until there's only six bumps left. So to do a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up. And before we were pinching this and pulling through those two, but now we're gonna add one more yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so that makes a slightly taller stitch there. That's a half double crochet. So we're gonna do that again 11 more times. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. All right, we're just gonna keep doing that until we only have six stitches left. So if you're brand new to crochet, 
you, you may not know, <laughs> when you do this first, this first row of stitches, it is always the hardest part because you're working into those chains. Sometimes those chains get really tight when you're making them, especially when you're a new crocheter. Um, but even if you're not a new crocheter, a lot of times your chains are a little tighter than your regular stitches and it's hard to get that hook through there. So, you know, give yourself some grace. And if you're really having a hard time, you can go back and start your chain again with a slightly larger hook in order to have a larger chain and then you'll switch back to a smaller hook. All right, we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let me count my half double crochets real quick. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six yarn over slip stitches, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 half double crochet. So I'm counting, if you're newer to crochet, um, know that the top V is a really good place to count your stitches because you can see those, they're very distinct. And now we're going to switch back to the other stitch pattern that we were doing, which was the yarn over slip stitch right here. So we're going to work the last six in that yarn over slip stitch pattern. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so here we have, we've got six yarn over slip stitches, 12 half double crochet, and six yarn over slip stitches right there. Then we're at the end of our row, so we are going to just chain one, and we're gonna turn our work, just like we're turning a page in a book like that, <clears throat> so we can work across the other side. Now this time we're gonna do the same stitches, except we're gonna place them a little bit differently. So we are gonna be working these stitches into the back loop. So with the back loop, <laughs> this is different than when I was saying the back bump because that was a chain. The back loop is right here where I'm placing this needle. That's the back loop. So in normally when you work a crochet stitch, you work underneath the V. So this is the V right here. You slide your hook under there, under both of those loops. But this time we're going to be working underneath just the back loop. So you kind of go in between them and out through the back. All right, so we're gonna do yarn over slip stitches, uh, six yarn over slip stitches through the back loop. So we yarn over insert through that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, pinch it, and pull through two. Okay, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, pinch, and pull through two. Here's our third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. And now we're gonna switch to the taller stitch, which is the half double crochet. And we are going to, again, be just working through that back loop. So we're gonna yarn over, insert through the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert through that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. Okay, we're gonna continue working those half double crochets through that back loop until we have worked 12 of them. So there will be six stitches left over. And what this is doing, because we're skipping that front loop, we're creating this nice little ridge right here. And because we're doing a yarn over before we make our stitch in both of these stitches, right? So we do a yarn over and then make a slip stitch for this stitch pattern, and we do a yarn over to start out our half double crochet. Because of that yarn over, you're gonna get these kind of like little V shapes instead of just this horizontal ridge. You also get this little ridge down here, um, which just makes kind of a nice little I don't know, it makes a nice little ridge on the pumpkin. <laughs> so that's part of the reason that I chose these two stitches to work this with. And I wanted, the, I wanted to do a little bit of shaping in an easy way, you know, working back and forth in these turned rows. We're actually working vertically along the pumpkin. Um, so it's going to be oriented in this direction like that eventually. So I wanted this to be a little shorter here and here to help with the shaping later because that's gonna become this part that's close up to the stem and this part that's down here too. You'll see when we get it all together. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six left. So now we're gonna switch back to the yarn over slip stitch through the back loop only. Yarn over, insert through that back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pinch and pull through two. All right, now we've worked to that very last stitch. We know because we had marked it. Um, and I should have really marked that first stitch, I just kind of forgot, but that's okay. 
If you're new to crocheting, try to remember to mark the first stitch you make, you know, each way so that you'll always know where to stop when you wor work across. All right, so at the, whoops, at the end of our row, again, we're going to yarn over and just chain one. We're going to turn our work like turning a page in a book, and then we're going to continue working in the exact same stitch pattern, exactly what we did on row two. So these are yarn over slip stitches. So we do six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness, we have so many people from all over the place joining us. This is very exciting. Um, we have a, a good morning from Brooksville, Florida. Uh, Meadowick, hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Farbien is joining us from Germany. Hello, welcome. Let's see. And Shatika Woods is saying good morning. Awesome crochet, thank you. And let's see, could use a bigger hook for the chain. Yes, okay, so I'm guessing, um, I'm guessing you sent that right before, or like around the time, like before I mentioned that you could use a bigger hook, but just to clarify, yes, you can use a bigger hook for the chain just to make sure that you make those stitches big enough to work into, because we are working at a fairly tight gauge here, as I mentioned before, and it is even harder to get your hook into those chains when you're already on purpose making them kind of tight. You know, if you're accidentally making them even tighter, then it's going to be really hard. So Renee is wondering if I'm using the yarn over slip stitch strictly for texture. So it is partly for the texture of those um, little Vs because it continues. If you look here, this one is a little bit easier to see. But if you look, you can see these sort of Vs on the ridge. So those are from the half double crochet. And I wanted to use a stitch that also continued those Vs right here. So the yarn over slip stitch um, did that. But also I wanted that stitch, whatever I chose for up here, to be shorter, about half as high or even a little bit less than the height of these stitches, these half double crochets. So it's partially for shaping and it's partially to continue that nice little, you know, that visual line of all those sort of V's stacked up, that nice ridge, because I really wanted the ridge to go, you know, basically from the top around the whole pumpkin, um, just, you know, for visual appeal. <laughs> um, and Donna's saying good morning from Missouri. Hello, Donna, and welcome. All right, we've got six yarn over slip stitches already, and now we're gonna switch to the half double crochet right here, and we're still just working through that back loop. So if for some reason you're like, oh, yeah, this yarn over slip stitch thing is not working out for me, I mean, give it a try, really give it a good try because that stitch is beautiful and it has a lot of stretch. And not only does it have stretch, but it boings back better than almost any crocheted ribbing that I've ever used. Um, except for just slip stitch through the back loop only. That is the boingiest. But if you use that yarn over slip stitch um, stitch pattern, you can, I mean, you can use it for all kinds of things. You can make really awesome beanies. You can make really great ribbing around your sweater. It's just a really good stitch to know, and I use it a lot because I like how it looks, but also I really like how it feels and how it returns back to shape. Um, so it is definitely worth learning, even if you are, if you're finding it a little bit tricky, really give it a good go. But if you're like, Brenda, this is not for me, don't give up on your pumpkin. You can definitely just do a single crochet through the back loop on the each side. You can do that and it will be fine. Um, you know, it'll still look really cute. There will still be that sort of ridge. It's not gonna have a V here, but it, it'll show this little ridge here. It'll, it'll still, you know, the visual line of, um, of the ridge will still go from top, top to bottom and it'll be fine. You can definitely swap it out with that if, if you, um, yeah, if you're having second thoughts about that, or maybe like fourth thoughts, because it's okay to have second thoughts and then just keep trying. <laughs> I'm championing for one of my favorite stitches here. Okay, so we're gonna switch to the yarn over slip stitch right here, because we only have th uh, six left. So this is our yarn over slip stitch, and we're working that, again, we're just working it through the back loop. And I've got two more stitches here until we get to the end. And then you can kind of start to see this pattern emerging here. So now you can see those sort of Vs going all the way across. So these were the slip stitches, half double crochet, slip stitches. So as we continue going back and forth and back and forth, we're just going to be working the same old number two instructions, row number two, just the same thing, working through the back loops, doing slip stitches here, half double crochets here, um, sorry, yarn over slip stitches here, half double crochets here, and yarn over slip stitches here as well. So 
You're going to do that until you've reached 40 rows, and your piece will look like this, thereabouts. Um, so it, it, you can see this is shorter. This is kind of rippling you know, throughout the middle because there's extra fabric here because this is much taller, and this is a little bit shorter here and shorter here. Uh, shorter, I mean, in this direction, right? Your measurement here is shorter. Um, so yeah, so this is what it should look like. You've got about 40 rows done, and you've ended here at the corner. Oh, I should probably weave in these two ends. I didn't do that yet. I'm going to do that and get them out of the way and maybe have a couple little tips for you on weaving in your ends. I had to join a new ball of yarn. Um, you likely will not because this is not a large amount of yarn, but I was trying to use up a very small ball of yarn when I was working on the sample here. Okay, so if, if you're a little bit newer to weaving in your ends, I would, um, I almost never, even though there's two ends here, you could load up your needle with both and weave them in. I almost never do that though because it does add a, a little bit of bulk when you weave in your ends, so I like to do them separately. <coughs> So I am going to just kind of weave my needle in through some stitches. I, what I tr like to do is get over into this little section right here, like that. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you are not um, going all the way through. You don't want to have a big loop there. You're just kind of trying, like imagine you're sliding your needle through the inside of your stitches. And so here you can go a little further um, in this direction. And when you weave in your ends, it's great if you actually split through your stitches instead of um, going in between your pieces of yarn. It's, it's good if you actually use your needle and you're splitting through those strands of yarn because it adds a little bit more grip and it's less likely to come apart. So I'm going to switch direction and go back in the opposite direction. So when you do that, you can't use the exact same path or you're just going to undo what you did. So you've got to kind of hop over to the next loop over and then you can go back in the exact same path and it won't be a problem. All right. And then you can just cut it off. You have to go, I mean, these are not going to be worn. It's not going to be something that's getting a lot of, you know, like someone pulling on it or stretching it or anything like that. So you don't have to be super thorough with weaving in your ends. It's really just, you know, a decoration. So it's not that big a deal. But I pretty much on principle always run my tail at least in two different directions when I weave in ends because that just makes it much, much more secure if it isn't just going in one direction. Because if it goes in one direction, you can stretch it a little and then your little yarn tail pops out. And it's kind of, it's kind of annoying when that happens. <laughs> All right. So here we are. So we would fasten off and we're going to leave a nice long yarn tail. So to fasten off, you'll just yarn over and pull that yarn tail all the way through your loop like that. And then we are going to <coughs> use our yarn tail to gather up this edge. But we're going to do that later. That's why we needed that long yarn tail. And we're also going to use it for a little bit of seaming too. Um, okay, so we're going to set that aside just for a, a few minutes while we talk about making this little square. So this is the other piece that we're making. We're just creating this out of just a regular single crochet, worked it back and forth in turn rows. <coughs> and single crochet is like basically, it is the most basic single crochet stitch there is. Um, pretty much everyone learns that right away. I mean, some people learn on granny squares, but single crochet, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like what a lot of stitches are based on. All right, so we're gonna make that loop, flip it over, Place that on our hook for our slip knot, and then we're going to chain, I believe it's 11. Let me just double check because I think there's 10 stitches across. Let me just make sure. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is actually called the hollow tube. I know this looks like a square, <laughs> but if you squint, you can tell it's really a hollow tube, right? <laughs> it's going to turn into this shape later, okay? So I know that that is kind of a strange way to name that, but it will turn into the hollow two later. Okay, so we're going to chain 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, now we're going to start again. I'm going to work into the bottom of my chain like I pretty much always do. I'm going to skip that first horizontal dash, and I'm going to create a single crochet in the next one. So to do a single crochet, you insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now you have two loops on your hook, and you're going to yarn over, 
and pull through two. And we're going to do that all the way across. Very simple single crochet. And this stitch is um, what most people make amigurumi out of. Those are the little cute crocheted toys that are so popular right now, which I love. Um, I mean, we're kind of almost doing that. These are almost like amigurumi pumpkins. I think that kind of almost counts. <laughs> but a lot of people make amigurumi out of the single crochet stitch because it's very, you can get a pretty stiff fabric. You want a stiff fabric when you're stuffing it because you don't want it to stretch out of shape. And you also don't want to see the stuffing that is peeking out between your stitches, right? You want to make a nice firm fabric. All right, so we've reached the end. I did, here, let me back up. We did our last single crochet into the last chain, then we're going to yarn over and pull through to make a chain, turn our work, and then we're going to single crochet all the way across. And this time, we are working under both those loops like we normally would. So there's our first single crochet, second single crochet, and in this pattern, <coughs> I just want to mention in this pattern, our turning chains do not count as a stitch. So if that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. Um, I'll show you when I get to the end. I'll explain that a little bit. But whenever we're working in turned rows, we have to add these things called turning chains. And that basically gets you from the row you're working right here up to the next row, up to the height of the next row so you can work across. It's kind of, I think of it as like placing a little ladder on the end, then you can work across. So here's my turning chain. So now my hook is a little higher up above my piece, and now I can work across. So sometimes in some patterns, that turning chain actually counts as the first stitch. Um, most often it's when you're doing like a double crochet or a taller stitch that it counts, but sometimes when you're working in single crochet, sometimes people count those turning chains as though you did your first single crochet. And what that means is, is you don't work into this stitch right here. If this counted, you would work right here but it doesn't count in my pattern, and almost, I almost never have that count in my patterns. It's kind of like a little theme for me. Um, so you'd work right into that very first stitch. Okay, so this is one of those things that can get very confusing for people, um, whether that's counting as a stitch or not counting as a stitch, and where to put your first stitch of the row, uh, just in general, is a little bit tricky, but if you use those stitch markers, uh, that will really help to just kind of keep track so that you know, okay? So you're just going to work back and forth and back and forth and turn rows until you get that cute little square that I'm calling the hollow tube. Um, you're only working eight rows, uh, and that will give you the square. And then, um, and then we're going to do a little bit of seaming. So this is kind of the exciting part. It's for me, I mean, I, I mean, all of it's exciting. I love crocheting, but it's kind of fun to see your pumpkin come together. Like, how is this going to be a pumpkin, right? <laughs> Some of you might be thinking, hmm, we'll see about that. All right, so let's see. Oh, I'm just checking in on my comments. Jan's saying, I'm really loving that this is an easy stitch to create, such a cute item. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome, Jan. I'm glad that you think it's easy. That was my hope. <laughs> boings, Renee is laughing at my boings. Yes, um, I did say boings, and I kind of thought, hmm. I wonder if anybody is going to think that's weird. And apparently I was appreciated by Renee. Thank you. <laughs> Shatika is saying, I'm doing so many different types of stitches for unique pumpkins. Oh, bubbles, popcorn, cables, simple, nice ridge like yours, stacked cinnamon sticks. Yeah, it's, this is a really super simple one. And there are some really, really great other kinds of pumpkins out there. I mean, just lots of really cool stuff. It's inspiring. And it's so awesome because fall is like a time when everyone kind of returns back. I mean, I never left. Um, but returns back to crochet and other kind of yarny crafts. It makes you feel cozy, and this is just like a really good, um, yeah, pumpkins are fun. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run our, we're going to thread our yarn tail with our needle, and we're going to run that through each of these ridges here. And by ridges, I mean these little Vs are creating a ridge, like a bump that sticks out. So we're just going to put our needle underneath that ridge and the next ridge and the next ridge, and we're just going to do that all the way across because that's going to help us gather in our pumpkin a little bit, and it's going to make it easier for us to sew. All right, so you can see those strands right there. You can leave them flat if that's easier because sometimes it starts like curling up and getting in the way of your hand. Um, you don't have to tighten them all up right away. We can do that when we're done, or you can tighten them as you go if you're fine with it. You don't have to worry too much, so we're just sliding that needle through each of those little ridges and pulling through. And by the way, this, it, 
it does not matter which side is the right side of your pumpkin. You can just look at them and be like, oh, I like this one better, or oh, this one has a little yarn tail nub sticking out here. I don't really like that side. So just choose whatever side um, you want to be the right side. Doesn't make a difference. All right, so there is our last ridge right there. So then we can pull this in. We're going to cinch it all in until it is the width of our square that we made. So the foundation edge or the last edge worked. Oops, I never fastened this off. Let me just do that real quick. Um, so on the very last stitch, this would be on your hook. And then you can just cut your yarn and pull through just like that. OK? All right. So we're going to tighten this up until it is about the width of the square, which is, for me, usually when I make these pumpkins, about as tight as it wants to go. It kind of wants to stop there. And then we're going to use this yarn tail to actually stitch it to that edge of the square. So before I do that, I like to take a little bitty stitch, like a couple stitches right here in, in a row, just kind of... Um, grabbing into just a little bit of the yarn. It doesn't matter exactly where your, yarn, your, your needle is going, but I'm doing a couple little whip stitches right here because that helps to anchor this so that it's not gonna start ooh, just opening up as I'm trying to sew this. Um, I'm gonna turn this upside down because it's a little easier for me. And now I'm going to stitch these two together. So if you have some quilters pins or something, you can certainly use that. You can also use stitch markers if you happen to have stitch markers. Um, I'm going to place a stitch marker in the last stitch here and then the very top corner where I'm going to end so that those two stay together. I find for this, it's not a very long space. So for me, I don't really need to pin it besides that little tiny corner just to make sure it stays put. Um, but if you're having trouble, if things are sliding around on you, you can certainly put another pin right in the center. Um, that's fine too. All right, so we're just going to whip stitch these two together. So I'm going underneath both you know, the whole V, both of those strands right there, and then just coming out, grabbing a little bit of that, the edge of the pumpkin. Now, I'm not putting my needle through a very specific spot in that pumpkin, in case you're wondering. I'm just looking for a spot. You know, like, you don't want to put your needle through just one loop, if you can help it, like that. Um, unless it feels sturdy, you can do that. I like to put my needle through, like, two loops or so, just to make sure it's nice and sturdy because we're going to be stuffing this and you don't want to see the stuffing coming through. So I'm basically just taking one stitch through each of these stitches on this side and then connecting it to the opposite edge of the pumpkin. Just like that. Just doing some whip stitches. Um, Lynn is saying she's excited to be here from Jupiter, Florida. Awesome. I'm excited you're here too. And Chitika is saying, I want to do a crochet poofed pumpkin footstool. Oh my gosh, that would be so cute. You should, <laughs> please do. Oh my gosh, now I'm just imagining, I'm just trying to think if you could use really huge roving and get a big enough um, pumpkin if you use this pattern. It might be hard to keep the stuffing though from coming out, but you could line it, I suppose. Oh, see, I love these lives because you guys give me so many ideas. And s actually speaking of ideas, you guys have other ideas of things you guys want me to design or teach during these lives please put that in the chat because um, a lot of my ideas come from you guys and I love you know I want to make the things that you guys want to make and um, I love hearing suggestions from you guys I've got some things in the works that other people have suggested in recent lives so um, yeah I, I, I love it when you guys have suggestions it's nice to get a different perspective on things <laughs> All right, so I've stitched that all the way across. You just want to kind of like, you can check with your finger, make sure there aren't any holes. All right, and then we can f um, weave in our end and fasten that off. Or let me see, will I want to keep that for later? I think I'm going to let that yarn tail just hang out in case I want that later because it's such a long one. I really made <laughs> a long yarn tail. We might need this later for sewing. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, you can always add a new strand of yarn uh, you know, if you didn't leave very long yarn tails, that's fine too. All right, so we've got this side stitched on. I know it looks really crazy right now, like a mermaid tail or something. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is we are going to do the exact same thing to the opposite side here. So I'm going to grab a new length of yarn because I don't think I left a very long. Ooh, yeah, like that. That, that I'll just cinch it in with this, yeah. I'll, 
I'll cinch it in with this little short guy here and then I'll weave it in and then I'll add a new yarn tail for sewing the next pieces together. All right, so we're just, again, going underneath the, those little strands of the V so that we can cinch it all together to sew it to the opposite side of that little bitty square. And don't sweat it too much if you're like, ooh, where, where exactly does this go? If you put it underneath two loops somewhere in that little, uh, towards the end of that ridge, you're fine. It's fine if it's in these way up here at the top. It's fine if it's in the next one down. Really doesn't matter. It's going to get um, cinched in very tightly, so it's not going to make a difference. You don't have to worry too much. This is not a precision project. <laughs> Yay. All righty. Almost there, a few more to pick up here. There we are, we've made it to the other side. Now I am going to cinch that in. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's very wrinkly at this point, but we are going to compare this to the edge of our little square and see if it's about the same. Yep, that's about right. So I'm gonna try and not let this stretch out. If it does stretch out a little, it's okay because you can still cinch it in as you're sewing the pieces together. What you don't want though is to, to bring this in till, till it is too small because then it's gonna be hard to sew to that edge there. You just want it exactly the size or even just a little bigger than that is fine. And I know that I'm not gonna have enough yarn tail to properly stitch it so I'm gonna just go ahead and weave in my ends right now and then I'll add a new strand. So I'm gonna weave it in, I'm choosing to weave it in onto the inside of my pumpkin here, just so that I don't have to be as careful about how it looks. And you might think, why are you bothering to weave that in? You could just let it dangle in there. Um, but I really don't want this to undo because it is helping keep the shape of the pumpkin. Once you get this edge stitched onto here, it's, you know, that secures it pretty well but it is a lot that we're gathering in there, so I really do like to make sure that this is woven in nicely so that it's not gonna, I don't know, have any extra stress on it. If this were to give way, we don't, we don't, we, we don't want this to give away, <laughs> give way. All right, so, oh, and I have this yarn tail here, which I kind of forgot about, so I'm gonna use that one instead of adding a new piece. And we are going to stitch this end here to the opposite side of the little square right there. Okay, same, same thing. We're just doing a little whip stitch along this edge here. We're gonna go through one stitch along um, the, what, you know, we're gonna stitch through each stitch across the top of the square, just kind of matching it up with where it needs to be along this line here, along this edge. So I'm gonna get this started with one stitch and then I'm gonna pin the other corner. All right, I'm gonna pin this corner right here well, by pin, I mean I'm gonna stitch marker this corner. <laughs> there we are. And we're just gonna make that fit. Okay, so this is a little bit longer, but that's fine. And we're gonna take a little stitch here and come out underneath both strands of the next stitch there, just making a very simple whip stitch. starting to look a little pumpkin-y, right? Like maybe someone dropped their pumpkin, <laughs> but still it's getting a little bit of that 3D shape, which is exciting. Couple more stitches here. There we go. Now we can get rid of our stitch marker. We don't need that anymore. I'm gonna make just a couple more little stitches right in the end so nothing starts pulling out. And do I really need to, all these yarn tails here? Hmm, there's already one there. I'm gonna leave it just, just cause I might need it. <laughs> I like to leave my yarn. I don't like to 
I don't like to add extra yarn if I don't need to. So I'm just going to let those dangle. I hope that's not too distracting for you guys. Um, so now here we have this kind of interesting shape. It's turning into a pumpkin. It wants, it's a pumpkin wannabe here. So this is what it's going to do eventually. See, there's the magic. Um, but first we need to stitch this little tube together. So this, this is what I mean by that kind of inner tube here. Um, hollow tube, whatever I called it. What did I call it? It's a hollow tube. This is going to become a hollow tube now <laughs> instead of a square. So we are going to use, we're going to use the same yarn tail because I've got it here. But if you, if you don't have any more, you can just kind of we, you know, pre-weave in your end and the, until it's anchored and then go ahead and stitch with that. That's fine. Um, we're going to stitch these two edges together right here. So let me turn it around so you can see what I'm doing like that. So we're just going to stitch these two edges together with a whip stitch. And we're creating that hollow tube that is going to be a receptacle for our cinnamon stick. So we're just doing a little whip stitch here. All right, let's see. Looks like we have maybe a couple more questions or comments. We've got, oh, could you make a knitted eye cord for the stem? Absolutely, you could. That's a great idea. Um, you could use a knitted, you could make a little knitted eye cord and stick it in there. Um, as long as you are able to, maybe you could, I don't know if you want to make the eye cord thick enough that you could stuff it a little bit. You could try that, or you could just, you know, use thicker yarn to create that knitted eye cord so that it's a little bit stiffer. And then it might be hard to, sh to put, depending on the size pumpkin that you're making, if the hole isn't very big, like this one, it's kind of small, it might be hard to get your eye cord to be seated properly in there. So you may want to place your, you may want to make your eye cord first and stick it in there and then whip stitch this close around your, your eye cord and you could even catch your eye cord so it doesn't fall out later um, as you are stitching this up. It's just a thought something to play around with, but you could absolutely do that. Um, if you don't want to use a cinnamon stick, you could also just use a twig too, um, if you like how that looks. But if you really want to have that sort of wooly feeling continuing through to the stem, I get that. Um, and you could definitely use, make an eye cord, sure. And there is a way to make crochet eye cord too. So if you're interested in that, um, you could do that as well. All right, so we've stitched up the little hollow tube. See. You can still, it's still open. You can still put things through it. There's my little finger peeking out. Um, that's where our cinnamon stick is gonna go. So one thing you wanna check is you want to see, I actually bought these cinnamon sticks um, and then realized that they were really short. This hasn't happened to me before because usually they're too long and I have to break them and then put, I, then I put the broken side down to hide the broken side because I kind of like how that looks all kind of chopped off. But this would be a good time if you're making a big pumpkin like this to check and see if your cinnamon stick is just going to get lost when you push it in there. So because in, in the pattern I tell you to just stitch either end of the hollow tube closed. So we just flatten it like this and we just stitch that close. We're basically just keeping it from having the stem follow through, fall through the pumpkin. Okay, we're closing it off. So if your cinnamon stick is kind of short and you made a really big pumpkin like I did, or maybe you're making an even bigger one, then you're gonna wanna make a second row of stitching up a little bit. You still wanna stitch it down here so it looks nice um, because that'll look, it, it might look weird to just have that kind of gaping hole in the bottom of your pumpkin. Um, so I'm going to stitch it down here and then I'm going to make another horizontal stitch up just a little bit so that when we slide our cinnamon stick in, it's not just going to disappear <laughs> into the pumpkin. I want it to, sh you know, I want to show it off a little bit. So, all right, let me move this yarn tail out of the way. All right, so I am going to, let me see, can you guys see this good enough? There's our little hollow tube and I'm just stitching across you know, the two layers of the flattened hollow tube right here on, the, right on the bottom, basically. So I'm gonna kind of, I'm poking my needle all the way through to the back here, and then just poking it back up through. It does, this does not need to be absolutely perfect, because your cinnamon stick is, you know, it should be thick enough that it's not gonna fall between any stitches here, but you just wanna have like a couple stitches back and forth to kind of tack this together 
near the bottom. You don't want to let the cinnamon stick slide through and it'll just look better on the bottom if you do that. Okay, so now because I'm also, I mentioned, I'm going to be stitching up here a little bit. So when I slide that cinnamon stick in, it has kind of a stop. So I am going to move my needle up here. See, I'm kind of glad that happened actually, because this might happen to some of you. And I hadn't thought about this before because the last time I bought cinnamon sticks, they were all extremely long. <laughs> it just didn't occur to me um, that your cinnamon stick might be too short. So I didn't really think about that. You can always make it shorter, but can't make your cinnamon stick longer. Let's see. Oh, we have a, um, a hello from Ohio. Hello, Christine. Welcome. Um, Renee is saying, have you already done a class on Tunisian crochet? I haven't done a live on Tunisian crochet. There are some videos on the Creative Crochet Corner website um, on Tunisian, but I haven't done a live. So that is something to think about. Thank you for this suggestion. And Jennifer Richmond is saying, very clever construction. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Shatika is saying, what about placing small rocks in the tubular receptacle for a little weight? And then whatever stem, yeah, that's a great idea. So like if your cinnamon stick is too short, put, put a couple little rocks in there and then you can put the um, cinnamon stick on top of it, it would hold it up and then it would ha have a little bit of weight in there. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you for that suggestion, that's awesome. See, this is why I like having lives because you guys have really good ideas too. And it's just like a pool of Awesome crochet hints and tips from everybody pouring in the scrape. Danielle Powell is saying you could crochet around the bottom hole to make the butt of the pumpkin, then pull the yarn through the center, crochet around the top of the hole to pull it closed and use the remaining tail. Okay, top of the hole. I wonder if you're talking, I guess I don't quite understand. I'm gonna have to let that percolate a little in my brain till I can figure out what you mean. Um, crochet across the bottom and then pull the yarn through the center, crochet around the top. Oh, like if you wanted to close the top of your pumpkin probably is what you're thinking. Um, in my, I th think that's what you're thinking. If it's not, you can pop back in here. Um, in my pumpkin, I leave that top open because that's where I just slide that cinnamon stick in there. But maybe you want to have it closed and if you were adding some kind of um, other crocheted piece, you could sew it to the top. Maybe that's what you're thinking. All right, so now we have that little stopper in there. I'm testing it out, looks pretty good. It's gonna stop my stick from going down too far. I stitched right across there and I also stitched down there. And now I'm gonna stuff my pumpkin and then continue sewing it together. I'm, we are almost done. All right, so I'm gonna take, let's see, let's get rid of this little yarn tail because I think this one's just too small to be helpful to me. And I'm gonna weave that in on the inside here. Kind of get rid of that. Okay. Okay, and then I will use this yarn tail to close it up when I get to that point. All right. So here we are with our little hollow, funny looking pumpkin, and we are just gonna stuff it with fiber fill. So just grab a chunk and kind of push it as far back to the back of the pumpkin as you can. And one thing, when you're stuffing crochet toys, well, when I do it, this is, this is what I'm doing inside there. I put my fingers into the stuffing and I wiggle my fingers. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to mix this blob of stuffing with the blob of stuffing that's already in there. I like, like to, like if this was inside, my pumpkin and I'm adding this piece to it. I do this and I wiggle my fingers around in there so that I kind of mix them together so it isn't just like two separate blobs touching each other because then it seems to fill things out better and it doesn't create as many of those kind of like, sometimes you can get little lumps that happen um, if your stuffing doesn't quite intermingle enough. We like them to intermingle in there. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing in there, wiggling my fingers making my magic inside the pumpkin. And you really do have to kind of shape things with your hands when you're stuffing. You can't just be like, pack, 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 pack. Okay, that's good. Why isn't it the right shape? Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're kind of sculpting. You're the sculptor here and you're trying to create the shape that you want to see. 
All right, we're going to need some more. Oh, it looks like um, our people have been busy putting some links in there for you guys about Tunisian crochet, which is awesome. So you have some stuff to look up when you got time. And thank you, Melissa from Wisconsin, for complimenting my cute pumpkin. <laughs> oh, and Shatika is saying, I've done an I-cord stem using double point needles, two needles, five stitches for thickness. Okay. See how much stuffing goes in here? Isn't that kind of shocking? I, I, I have made so many toys, you would think that I would stop being shocked by how much stuffing goes into things. Um, but it's always like, wow can't believe all that fit in there. But you really like it to be a nice and firm shape so that it doesn't kind of distort over time. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to pull out just a little bit here. All right, now we're going to do our last seam and then we have one more little optional thing you can do to shape your pumpkin, which I'll show you. All righty. So this part, um, it may help you to put some extra pins in, uh, but just make sure, here's my advice to you about doing that, make sure when you're using pins in something like amigurumi that you count how many pins you used and then count them when they come back out. Like set aside 10 pins and then put them in your project and then when you're done, look and see if you have those 10 pins because <laughs> they could end up in the inside of your project accidentally. All right, so now we are going to stitch up this ridge here. So we're just going to go underneath both edges of the ridge. So we're just going to slide our needle under those two and our needle under these two to kind of match them up. Under those two, under these two. Let's make a nice secure seam here. And you'll, you can adjust your stuffing as you go if you find like it's too much or not enough. Just, you know, think about doing that before the very end. Like stand back and look at it. See if it looks lumpy. You can put your hand in there and you can kind of like move things around. But you just got to watch and make sure that your edge is not <coughs> going to be too tight for you to do that later. I'm going to take just a little bit out and kind of redistribute a little, just a little bit because my next step, I, I don't want my, I just want to make sure on my next step that I can do a little bit of shaping with some longer stitches and it's still squishy enough that I can do that. Oh, Renee is saying that they use plastic grocery bags for stuffing and it works well for this type of project. You gotta stuff it real full. <laughs> I don't use the bags for amigurumi though. Okay. Yeah, I imagine it would work really well. That's a good way to use them up. I don't know if you've ever tried crocheting with your plastic bags, but I did a little tutorial with my friend Jen Lucas about making plarn, which is just plastic yarn from um, plastic grocery bags and then crocheting with that, which is really cool. That's a very fun project. Oh, Danielle is saying, yeah, yes, I meant top hole, not top of the hole. I'm allergic to cinnamon, so I need to make the stem myself. Yes, you can make it yourself. You can also, if you didn't want to make it yourself, you could also just use a little twig. That looks really cute, too. Just break off a little twig and stick it in there. And I'm sorry, you're allergic to cinnamon. <laughs> Shatika is saying, a couple of drops of fall scents, pumpkin, lavender, apple in the center to freshen one's home and awesome decor. Oh, good idea. That's a great idea. It smells so good. All right, so here is my last stitch, the top. So the last little thing, and this is optional because this is already a very cute little pumpkin. See, it's very round. And the only thing left on these pumpkins, I made 
see how it kind of has these little bumps that go like this, kind of like, and then they're, it's a little bit more squashed um, height-wise. So that happens when you kind of use long strands of yarn to sort of pack it down and kind of create those little sort of divots. Um, so this is totally optional, and maybe you want to do some of each kind, because um, that would be really cute to have like a variety of different kinds of pumpkins, like you do. Um, and so, but I'm going to show you how to do this. So I, I think in the pattern I tell you every eight rows to put a line. Let me just check and see what I said there. Okay. Okay, so you can make um, an equal five lobes if you make vertical stitch between each set of eight rows. So if you want to do it this way, if you want to have five lobes, like how these have five little lobes, one, two, three, four, five, then you just divide that 40 rows by five and you get eight. So um, to count your rows, you're going to take a look at where your ridges are. So this is a row and this is a row, so that's two. This is a row and this is a row. That's two. So every time you get to that sort of more distinct ridge and you count up to the next distinct ridge, that's two rows. So if you want to um, go ahead and make your first um, stitch, so you'll just take this, make sure that you've stitched back and forth a couple of times here to, um, to make it really secure. I'm gonna do one more stitch for good measure. And then you just take that strand of yarn and you're just gonna pull on it and have it go all the way to the bottom. And then when you stitch back up, you don't wanna stitch through the center where like right next to your cinnamon, you are actually stitching through where your stuffing is. So imagine here, okay, how do I explain this? Okay, let's imagine this is actually your inner, just imagine this is your inner tube, right? The inner, inner what did I call it? the thing that was once a square and now it is the hollow tube the hollow tube okay i'm like inner tube that's okay that's too summary okay so imagine this is the hollow tube on the inside okay this little crocheted part here you're not going inside this tube and coming back out you are because that makes it look kind of weird and squished um you are sliding your needle right through the fabric in past the stuffing but on the outside of that or you know on the outside of the hollow tube. So right alongside the hollow tube here, and you come out the top, okay? So, so actually, we don't need that in there right now. Um, we'll put it in later. But so you're going to slide your needle up from the bottom, and I can feel it come out. We're going to have it come out right there where we first exited. My needle's going to come out right next to it. Let's see if I can get my needle to shine a little so you can, guys can see it. Okay, and that's one very long loop, right? It does, it does nothing until you pull it a little bit tighter. And then you can see how it makes that little cute little dent. And if you are using a yarn that is not super sturdy, I would recommend either doubling up on your yarn or finding a yarn that's a similar color or even like a couple strands of embroidery floss, which is very strong, um, and making these stitches with something else. Because if you use like, I don't know, kind of a fluffy one ply. I actually used that on this and it worked okay because I was testing it to see if it would work. But I really had to keep twisting that one ply yarn to, just to make sure it wasn't gonna break. So you just have to be mindful of that because you're gonna be pulling on these strands pretty tightly. All right, now I'm taking a couple little stitches to anchor it. And I think I have enough yarn here to do one more <laughs> before we switch to a new piece of yarn. Um, Okay, we have a question. Debbie's wondering if this can be rewatched. Yes, these can always be rewatched um, af yeah, after it streams live. So we, here we have two, four, six, and eight. I'm counting my rows from this line to where my next line goes. So my next line is going to be right here. So I'm going to get my needle over there. I'm just going to take a little stitch over to where I want it to be. Take another couple little stitches just to kind of anchor it. And then I am going to take the strand, I'm wrapping it right in that kind of crack between those two rows, all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to insert my needle right next to that hollow tube, not going to the inside of it, and then I'm going to have my needle pop out right where it originally was, okay? 
and then I'm going to pull on this to shape it. And then I'm going to take another little stitch here. All right, we are just about finishing up. I'm going to do a couple more little lines here. Um, and I just want to make sure that if you guys have any more questions or suggestions, you can get those in uh, before the end of our time. All right, so now I'm going to weave this in because it's not long enough to do the next one. But we got a lot of, got a lot of mileage out of that one. <laughs> I don't feel too bad about it. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, we're going to grab another little strand of yarn. Okay. So the next place we're going to make a, a stitch, or kind of that long wrap, this will be two, four, six, and eight. We're going to make it right through here. So I am going to just try and weave in my, actually I'll do this on the bottom, just in case it doesn't look perfect. Two, four, six, eight, somewhere around here. I'm going to weave this back and forth before, um, before I make that stitch quite a few times, just to make sure it's very secure. And actually, you could tie a knot here. Actually, that probably would have been a good idea, um, especially if you're not used to going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You could tie a knot and then bury both ends because you really want this to be quite secure because you're going to be really pulling hard. Whoopsie, it, just like that, it popped out. All right, so I'll, <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to take one little stitch here. I'm glad I didn't make that stitch and then it popped out. Leave your yarn tail nice and long. Just going to tie a nice little knot here, a very secure knot. This is on the bottom of the pumpkin. No one's going to see it. Only you will know it's there. Um, and then you can weave in that, in that yarn tail. Just like that. There we are. Now we know it's going to stay. All right. OK, so we have two, four, six, and eight. So we're going to wrap it right here and then send our needle all the way down to the bottom where we came out. doesn't matter whether you start at the top or the bottom, but you just want to make a complete circle before moving on to the next strand. There we go. Makes a nice shape. And then do a couple little anchoring stitches. There we go. Oh, Renee was saying, if you're working back up through the stuffing to make the creases, the plastic bags may not work. Yeah, that might be tricky to get your needle through that. That's a good point, Renee. But if you're not doing these, since these are optional, that would be a good way to use up your plastic bags. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Um, so sorry, that was two, four, six, eight. <laughs> I'm counting by twos here, my, my rows. So we're gonna go right down next to that hollow tube and out the same place. Just like that. And then Take a couple little stitches here, make sure that it's anchored, and then we have one more strand. Oh, it looks like I have a little tiny hole there that I'm going to stitch up. So maybe I'll travel over here and do that real quick before I do that last strand. I think I didn't stitch all the way um, down to the very bottom when I stitched my seam, or maybe two of my stitches got pulled further apart than they should be because of that strand, but that's okay. If you see something like that, no big deal. No need to panic. Just stitch it up. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go back in. Let's see, two, four, six, and eight. Here is our little line 
for stitching right here, right there. And we're going to go down next to that hollow tube and out the bottom. Just want to make sure it's in that little crack there. There we go. All right, look at our cute little Cinderella pumpkin, you guys. It's looking very adorable. All right. So um, before we go, I want to mention too, if you come back at, let's see, 11.30, which is not very much time from now, so I'll see you soon if you can, I'm going to be doing a little Q&A and a live tutorial on how to put a zipper into a little crocheted zipper pouch without sewing the zipper in, because I know people have, you know, <laughs> They have feelings about zippers. I understand that. Um, so this is a different way to, to do it without actually having to sew the zipper in. So that will be at 11.30. All right, here's our cute little pumpkin. And I am going to stick my little stem in there and then admire it. Isn't that so adorable, you guys? Super cute. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Oh, Danielle is saying stick an artificial leaf or two at the stem. That would be cute, too. Um, and we've got Jan as a fairly new person to crochet. I know I can do this. Awesome. Yes, I was hoping that we would get some new crocheters um, to make these adorable pumpkins. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you being here. Hopefully I'll see you guys back at 1130 today. All right, bye. Thank you.